today I'll be talking about 10 health changes that I experienced after I quit flying. Well, I'll be talking about sickness, how many times you get sick, why you get sick, so causes and effects, and I'll give you my personal experiences. And also I'll be talking about weight management, what a struggle it is to lose weight and to stay fit, and all the intolerances that you develop throughout time. I, for example, developed intolerance to cow milk, and so now I can't drink that anymore. And I'll be talking about also the presence, your presence, how present you are when people are talking and most of the times you kind of phase out without even realizing. We'll talk about also the related energy that you have, how much devotion you can put into the actions you do throughout the day, whether you're studying or you're reading or you're playing a game or you're with some friends. And we'll be talking about skin problems, so how your skin becomes red, itchy, rashy, flaky, and you see, you feel these kind of dead pieces of skin falling off of your forehead and stuff like that, even flakes over your head, so potential dandruff. We'll be talking about pregnancy. I didn't personally experience this, but I've seen it through friends and other colleagues, and it's been really hard for them to get pregnant when they were flying and when they quit flying three to four, even up to six months after. All the radiations and all the wrong biological patterns, how much those impact fertility and being able and capable of getting pregnant. We'll talk about memory, specifically the short-term memory, which is quite compromised when you're a cabin crew, like you have a goldfish memory. And so we'll be talking about how bad it is, how much it is impacted as you're flying. We'll be talking about focus, how much you can focus on complex tasks. For example, if you're doing something that is quite tough and it requires your brain a whole lot, are you able to have a good output as if you were not flying at all, if your career wasn't revolving around flying but was dedicated to something else, how much focus can you delegate to those complicated tasks? And we'll be talking about hair loss. I'll give you a before and an after. This is something that I personally witnessed and experienced. Dramatic difference from when I quit flying to now, fast forward now, so I'm going to give you all these tips and I'll be talking about that. My name is Orlando. I am the founder of Wishcasting. We do a lot of training and a lot of updates on the aviation industry and airlines and travel. We help people become cabin crew, but we also say exactly how things are in the airline and aviation industry. We never keep anything hidden from you. We always tell you the truth because we don't want you to take a career path and then regret it. We want you to be happy all the way. I was working for Ryanair for two years, and then I transitioned to Emirates for five years, give or take. So I have a seven-year history, let's say, a seven years experience background in the aviation industry. So let's get down to business and let's talk about sickness. For every single bullet point, I'll be giving you a before and after so you can have a nice perspective of how things have evolved and changed from back then when I was working as a cabin crew till now when I'm not working in the air anymore. I used to have blocked sinuses, not just me, but my girlfriend and for my colleagues, blocked ears consequently, blocked nose. It was really easy to catch a cold. And when you're flying and you have blocked sinuses and ears and you're landing, the difference in pressure can puncture your eardrums. It's very, very dangerous. It's called barotrauma. Another condition was tendinitis on the wrists. You're carrying very heavy trays, not in economy class, but in business class. And when you keep on doing it and keep on doing it for several months in a row and you're flying a whole lot, you tend to develop this inflammation around your wrists. It's the easiest area for you to develop tendinitis. Eventually, you'll have to stop flying because the only way for you to get rid of tendinitis is staying at home and not moving your wrists. Another problem is bunion or hallux valgus. This is something that you develop on the inner side of your foot close to the big toe, mostly because of your shoes. They're pressing on this area, creating a crazy, crazy amount of pain, and your foot deforms because of this pressure. This is mainly present in women, but it can happen for men as well. There's a lot of other complications that I could be talking about now, but I can't go on forever. So the last time I got sick or had a cold was back in Emirates when I resigned. It was in 2018. Ever since, I never got sick. Never. So my tips would be to take supplements whenever possible. So vitamin B for energy, zinc for immunity, spirulina tablets for antioxidants and amino acids. Drink a lot of water so your respiratory system stays moist and doesn't get inflamed. And whenever you can, bring your own food on board. Uh, if you want to find more links to the supplements that we talked about earlier, you can find them in the description because it, it is a little bit complicated to remember all these things. Weight management. There's always good food on board, especially Emirates. They always have really good food in business class and first class. So you tend to eat 
a lot. When you go on the layover, you're in some other place around the world from where you come from. So on your layovers, you definitely want to try the super good traditional cuisine from the place you're going to. Most of the times you're eating at crazy weird times of the day or of the night, and you might be going to bed right after. This can lead to an inflammation of your body. Trying to eat in moments where you're supposed to go to sleep, and then you're trying to sleep when you're supposed to be awake. All these things can lead to stress and the wrong hormones being produced. Let's talk about after. I used to weigh 87 kg, so 191 pounds, and now I'm 78 kg, so 171 pounds. With regular patterns, I can eat home cooked food, healthy food, I can sleep right, I can exercise regularly, and I can fast whenever I need. We did a video about the intermittent fasting. Feel free to have a look in the link up on the right hand corner. It's really good. It'll give you the ability to lose weight in a super, super easy way. No exercise needed. So if I can give you some tips, I would recommend doing intermittent fasting, as I said. Stop eating meat if you can. Stop eating before bedtime. Do some exercise before breakfast so the calories you burn are directly from your fat because sugars are absent because you use them overnight. I said about meat to stop eating meat because it's a clever thing to do. It's really hard to digest. And if you're doing this really, really tough job, digesting meat is really tough on you because your blood flow is directed towards your stomach to digest that food rather than going to your body, to your muscles, to to actually perform your duties on board. Intolerances. Before, I would throw up and rush to the toilet if I drank cow milk in Dubai. I had to call sick three times because of it. So I had trouble digesting it. And I also had trouble digesting meat. Now after, so nowadays, I can drink milk no problem. I'm no longer intolerant. So if I can give you some tips just to make things better if you're flying, stop drinking animal milk, try vegetable milk. So I'm talking about soy, oats, almond, coconut, rice milk. It's healthier and it respects the environment. And you can even do it at home by using the chufa mix here. I'm gonna give you a few examples, but check the links down in the description. You'll find everything necessary for you to do it at home. And you're gonna save money and have better milk than the ones that you can find in the supermarket. Before, when I was with friends, I would sometimes, well, quite often stare blankly at them or I didn't hear what they were saying. I would have to apologize and I was most of the times detached from reality. This is the way I felt. I don't know if it's applicable to everyone, but I'm quite sure to most of the people that were flying. After, nowadays, I'm able to be present and to live the moment much better. I always want to do something and experience something new. I'm very careful to what others are saying and ask questions to show interest. Energy. This is also related to the previous point, presence. Before, I was always feeling like an empty gas tank. The struggle was so real even to stand up and pick up the TV remote control. Like if I was on a couch and the TV remote was on the table right in front, I would have to struggle to stand up and pick it up. The lack of sleep, the tiredness and the fatigue and the amount of hours that I was missing every single time I went to bed. So I would sleep maybe four hours each day and I typically need about seven to eight hours. So I was missing four hours each time. In order for me to get that sleep back, I would have to sleep so many nights in a row properly in order for me to recollect those missing hours. So I was pretty much becoming fatigued. Fatigued is when you're missing all those hours and those add up. It's not tiredness, it's fatigue. So consequently, I would stay at home a whole lot. I would give priority to my sleep rather than being with friends or doing fun activities in Dubai. I was also much more grumpier than now. But nowadays, so after, I wake up at 5.45 each day and I exercise right away. I take a full-on cold shower and have a large breakfast straight after. I work all day and when I'm done, I read, study, and I do even more things. I skip dinner because of my intermittent fasting and I eat less, but I have more energy. So how's that possible? Well, that's how it's been going for me for the last two years, maybe two years and a half. So if I gotta give you some tips, I would recommend you to exercise as soon as you wake up, take a cold shower, eat a good breakfast, no matter the time of the day, and be as little as possible on your phone. Read more and read before sleeping and sleep at least six to eight hours. If you read before sleeping, you'll feel sleepy as you're reading and so you'll fall asleep quicker. Skin problems. Before, I used to have super oily skin. I still have oily skin, but not as much as before. My hair would look super oily too, and as a result of it being too oily, I would lose that hair. I would have flaky skin on the scalp and forehead, some dandruff, and my girlfriend would have horrible skin rashes and pimples. After, so nowadays, I still have an oily skin, but it builds up twice as slow. It takes twice the time to have oily hair too. I don't have any dandruff at all, and my hair isn't falling as much anymore. 
My girlfriend has nicer skin and pimples occur only during her menstrual cycle. So if I got to give you some tips, don't use makeup unless necessary. Use good quality skin moisturizers. Massage your skin with rollers to stimulate that blood circulation. You can find those links in the description. I'll have them all written there. Stay away from dry environments such as an aircraft cabin. Well, it's kind of funny if you're a cabin crew, you can't really avoid it, but that's the fact. And use a humidifier at home so you can reestablish that humidity on your skin. Pregnancy. Before, while I was working in Emirates, it would often happen that I would sit down in the galley and talk to my colleagues, and I would find out that one of the biggest problems is infertility. The main reason behind this is the amount of radiations you're exposed to, but it also is affected by the alternation between night and day, which affects your sleep. Because this is not following a determined pattern, which is what your body likes, then you start developing stress. This causes your body to enter a defense mechanism where it chooses to save its energy and skip skip a menstrual cycle. In stress mode, your body chooses to save energy, so making you fertile becomes sort of an option. It's not like a physiological necessity. After, so nowadays, the colleagues that I'm still in touch with and that couldn't have a baby or that lost their baby while they were flying now have been able to have a child because they stopped flying and stayed on ground for prolonged periods of time. Pregnancy is much easier to achieve if you don't fly. Your fertility is ensured every month. The uterus becomes a better and stronger habitable place for the egg, so pregnancies have larger success. Your period comes at exact given times, not late, nor early, nor skipping of any menstrual cycle. So the tips that I can give you here is to stop flying, stop exposing yourself and your potential baby to radiations, do exercises to keep your uterine muscles strong and healthy. Yoga works, but if you don't have time, you can contract those muscles quickly for about a minute, even when you're sitting down. Get them tired and that's it. Do it every day. Both men and women can contract these muscles and the benefits of doing so are really good. Better sex, stronger muscles, and it's great against incontinence. Memory. Before, I would forget why I'd entered a room, what I was looking for, or where I parked my car. I'd forget names and things. It'd take me a bit longer to talk and produce sentences that made sense without stuttering or pausing between words. Nowadays, so after, I don't forget things anymore. I retain most of the information I come across and I definitely know what I'm looking for when I enter a room. I feel like I can rely on my memory much more. It took me over a year to gain this type of confidence and trust in my own mind. You really need to stop flying to regain your full memory's potential back. So let me give you some tips. Always challenge your brain, learn new skills, languages, sports, or even instruments. The more you exercise your brain, the less it becomes comfortable and lazy. Flying is the worst thing ever for your brain. If you don't exercise it, you'll lose it. Focus. Before, while I was working in Emirates, studying, reading, writing, doing any type of research, talking on camera for my videos, coordinating tasks with other people was harder than ever. I would start and lose focus after a couple of minutes. I'd stare at a book or a paper I was writing on, I'd think of something else while browsing online articles, and I'd make thousands of mistakes while talking on my YouTube videos. It would always get super messy and time consuming because my attention would drift away. But after, so nowadays, I can finally read and not lose focus. I can read longer and retain more information. When I talk on videos or coordinate interviews, I stutter less, making my dialogue much nicer and easier to comprehend. So if I had to give you some tips, I would recommend you to use your finger while reading, follow your finger with your eyes. You'll less likely lose focus or skip lines this way. Put your phone away and don't let it rule your day. Spend 25 minutes on a task, then take a five minute break. This is called the Pomodoro effect and it's scientifically proven that after 25 minutes, you kind of lose interest and focus in the task you're doing. So the break keeps your brain fresh, allowing you continuity on that project. Hair loss. Before, in Emirates, when I took a shower or took a look at the pillow after waking up, I'd find several of my hairs there. Kind of got scary at a certain point. I started developing hairless areas on my forehead and above my temples. Baby hairs would grow, but shortly after, they would fall off. Eventually, I even lost the baby hairs with no hope of getting them back anymore. Nobody in my family ever lost any hair, so it's not genetic. I was sure it was due to stress, fatigue, lack of sleep, hormonal imbalance, time change, and all that stuff that comes with being a flight attendant. After, nowadays, I now grew my hair back in places I didn't think I'd be able to. My hair is stronger than before, but still not as strong as before I started flying. I think the scalp gets compromised after time and there's nothing you can really do about it. But I do look healthier and younger and I don't need to have a short haircut to prevent hair from falling. It is noticeably stronger. I'll give you some tips. Stay away from dry environments. Use a brush or a roller to massage your scalp. This way you stimulate blood circulation 
and your hair gets its nutrients. Don't allow your scalp to stay oily for too long or this will block the hair pores and follicles not allowing a correct oxygenation and perspiration. Use a good shampoo and every now and then use a hair mask to get rid of the toxins off of your scalp. I have all the links in the description again, just go there and check them out. Alternating hot and cold showers help circulation of blood in your body, but that also works for your hair, so make sure to wash your hair with hot and cold water too. So all in all, if I would have to recommend something, I wouldn't recommend you join an airline. It's unhealthy. But if you want to travel the world and you want to discover new cultures, new places, live new moments, then do it. Do it for three to five years, but don't make it a career because it's quite unhealthy and it's really hard to keep relationships, keep things stable. I have a cabin crew course down in the description. It's completely free. Just click on it. Follow all the free lessons there are. Don't think that this is the only thing you can do out of your life. Do it only if you really want to. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe. That helps us a whole lot. We'll be super grateful and we wish you a wonderful day. See you next time. Bye.